go out, I'll show you the um, constructed wetland side. Okay. I look forward to seeing it. There we go. So these are the constructed wetlands. And uh, this is the third step in the process, the, the first one being the EQ tanks and then the anoxic tank. But these are the real workhorse of the eco machine. And these, if you think of uh, a built-in pool, and uh, they're four foot deep, rubber, rubber liner filled with gravel and planted with uh, plants that are native to the lake. You can see Long Pond Lake out here. Uh -huh. And the idea is that their roots go down into the gravel and act as habitat for the microorganisms. Uh -huh. And the organisms, uh, people always ask, well, where do you get all these organisms? Because there's billions of organisms in here. They come in the wastewater track from all of us because we all have those organisms in our bodies. And so they come out in through the waste stream, they populate here, and they act as in, in consort with many other organisms to actually start to purify the wastewater. And if you were to go down and dig in that gravel a little bit, about two inches down, you would actually be seeing the wastewater as it moves through this oh. process. So this was all, all this piping, plumbing was, was set up to move everything. Correct, this is, oh. this is fed by gravity, comes across here, oh. feeds through gravity from these upper two cells to the lower two. And then we actually pump it back up into the aerated lagoon section, which we'll go into later. Wow. And then that, that more brown and gray section that you see down there is a final sand filter. And basically what that does is it makes a final polishing. If you just think any last little particulates that may be in the water, um, that takes care of that process. And so if you think brown and nasty, just what you would think about wastewater would be mm -hmm. coming in, by the time we take the water from there ready to recharge the aquifer, it looks like it's coming out of your kitchen faucet and it's ready for reuse. We could use it for irrigation and so forth, but our purpose was to create a closed hydrological loop and actually recharge the aquifer yeah. with it. So we're, we're constantly in that relationship to yeah. the amount of water we use and, um, and that level of recharge. So if you want, let's go in and look at the aerated lagoon section. Okay, now. Oh, that'd be great, Skip. Mm. All right, so we're coming in now. This is the aerated lagoon section of the process, and this is after the constructed wetlands and before the sand filter. And now if you were staying on campus, you're looking at uh, your wastewater from yesterday. Oh. Okay, so you've already um, you know, taken a shower, flushed the toilet, whatever it is that you've you know, done here on campus. This is now you're in this process. Your organisms are in here. This is your water from there. Mm -hmm. And you can see already you don't have a lot of odor here at all. Mm -hmm. You have a, right. it's a reasonable amount of clarity in here. Mm -hmm. And these are eight foot deep. The roots go down to various levels in the water and act as habitat for the microorganisms. If you were to reach down there and grab a, a handful of the roots, they would come up all brown and clumped mm -hmm. with organisms. So the water, it's, a, it's, it's like an, an organism filter. Yeah. that just continues here. So you, the water comes in this end actually through these pipes and then moves through this, through this whole section of plants. Uh -huh. And you can see that we have flowers that we grow in here. We actually have some banana trees over here that have um, uh, bananas on them. And it goes through here. You can actually look at every single cell of this and see the water getting clearer and clearer and from the end it goes down to that sand filter. You have to remember that Omega is an educational center. So we wanted people to be able to get into this part. And what happens is we do a tour and we take people all out and we show them, you know, what wastewater looks like pre-process, which you can imagine what that's like. Mm -hmm. And then we bring them in through this door and they see it, they see the beauty of this space. And there's that, you know, that moment of connection between wastewater and beauty. And that's really the transformative moment where people start to ask all of their questions. Uh, you know, like, what's in the water now? And uh -huh. how does it work? And, you know, yeah. what part do I have well, in it? That's great. Just because we, we've gotten so disconnected from nature and just think mm -hmm. about our wastes, mm -hmm. food, all this stuff. That, exactly, exactly. And yeah. the, the goal of, of this center, one of the things that's most important is connecting people 
to water mm. and just the preciousness of water and how we for so long devalued it yeah. to where now you're starting to see people start to look at, well, we're going to have to start pricing water this way. But that's not the real answer. The, yeah. real, the real answer is to think about all the ways that we touch water every day because they're not just by flushing the toilet or taking a shower, they're in everything you buy. Everything that you buy, or whatever food you eat, right. it takes water to manufacture mm -hmm. and it takes water to grow. Mm -hmm. So your decisions along the way, how much stuff do I need? How many cars do I need? How big does my house have to be? Mm -hmm. Besides ha having all of those carbon footprint issues, they have huge water in, uh, footprints. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you notice in here, uh, these little skylights. Uh -huh. So those are solar trackers. And yeah. what happens with them is they track the sun during the day and they put the light down onto the plants, and that allows us to not have all glass in the ceiling, and that mm -hmm. saves on our energy calculation tremendously. There's a lot of different plants in here. You see the calla lilies right over here to your left, mm -hmm. and then we have our bananas right here in front. I always get asked, well, can I eat one of the bananas? And the answer to that is no, because this is still wastewater here, oh. and you know the, the liquid is in those bananas, yeah. and it's part of their growing process. But it, it, it illustrates the vitality of the water because mm -hmm. when you think about wastewater, people always think about it negatively, you know, like it's, it's not something to value. And yet it has tremendous value in its process. There are a lot of people now working in phosphorus recovery, a lot of people working in energy recovery out of wastewater. And in the future, wastewater is going to be looked at totally differently. Mm -hmm. And this is a step in that process. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, you, have you had scientists, you, you have students, scientists, mm -hmm. MIT mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. places? Well, we have them coming from all various universities. And we've also worked with the Cary Institute uh, right uh, a few miles east of here in our pharmaceutical study, um, looking at oh, what's in the wastewater, what I was talking yeah, about before. That's huge. And because, uh, you know, depending on who you want to use as your source, there are pharmaceuticals in all the, all the water that we as human beings consume right. at this point. Yeah, well, and yeah. they're looking at a, at a lot of the difficulties that we're having in our, in our own health as to what's actually in the water that most municipal systems do not remove. Mm -hmm. And so what we were looking at to do was, all right, what are we learning from this eco-machine? How can we take what piece of this technology would work easy being married to a, commercial, a more larger scale commercial system? And how can we do that? And the other piece is we're going to be experimenting, uh, collecting the phosphorus uh, from here and actually returning that to the farms that where we buy our food as a fertilizer. Um, and uh, because a lot of what's happening is people don't realize the amount of nutrients that are in waste. There's this whole sort of taboo about thinking as human waste as nutrient based for, mm -hmm. for farming, mm -hmm. which is really just totally yeah. ridiculous. Uh -huh. And it's based on, you know, um, looking at the microorganisms that are problematic, whether it be E. coli or et cetera. And that's all true, but there are ways to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is brilliant in so many levels. All the electricity on the campus is either wind or solar. There are three arrays. Uh -huh. This one, the one up on that roof over there, and the one I showed you on the front side yeah. of the building. And we actually generate more energy than we use, and through a net metering program, the rest gets sold back to our provider. This is where you can really get a sense of the building. From here, you can see the solar panels. You can see all the steps, the different steps. In the, in the process, mm -hmm. looking into the building and see the classroom space and really get a sense, you know, that your sun's traveling like this across the, across the building. Uh -huh. High in the summer, so that overhang shades it. Low in the winter, so the sun goes all the way into the aerated lagoons and also heats the classroom. This is our discharge basin here. Mm -hmm. and So you already noticed there's no odor here. I know. And look how clean that water is. Wow. And that's the water that's been pumped? That's the water that's oh. been through the entire oh, okay. process, OK? And then this is where it's, it goes to discharge mm -hmm. and gets sent. Uh, we have infiltrator chamber, chambers that are buried underneath the parking lot. And they trickle this water back down into the aquifer 
and then we pull it out and start all over yeah. again. Yeah, so this is, this is great, Skip. It's yeah. a brilliant vision you had. So yeah, well, thank you for that. I want to thank you so much for showing me. And, ah, and it's a pleasure having you. Pleasure yeah. having you. Thank you. You're welcome.